On Monday, we looked at the first five technologies that flat earther Eric DeBay thinks proves the Earth is flat. With those first five being very hard to beat in terms of how bad they were, can the next five fare any better? I highly doubt it. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon and Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin, a quick reminder that tomorrow I will be going live for the new live show where I'll be discussing all the latest science, space and conspiracy news. Uh, this is a live show that we'll be having twice weekly, every Wednesday and every Friday. See you tomorrow for the first one. Right, let's crack on with this ridiculous list then, shall we? And I know the first five are bad, but on this five there's something on there which is quite funny to be honest. If you haven't seen the first part yet with the first five technologies, the link is in the description. Go and check it out now if you want before watching this one. Right then, let's get on to the sixth piece of technology then that Eric DeBay thinks proves the Earth is flat. Six, spirit levels. Spirit levels, also known as bubble levels, are instruments designed to show whether a surface is horizontally level or vertically plumb. I know you aren't going to tell me that a spirit level on the floor proves a flat earth, are you, Eric? Please don't tell me that. The names spirit and bubble refer to an alcohol-based solution, which, along with an air bubble and central markers, indicate when surfaces are horizontal or vertical. These leveling tools have been used in carpentry, construction, and surveying for nearly four centuries, with precision engineers' levels now accurate to within one thousandth of an inch. Yes, for making sure the kitchen worktop is straight, not the whole planet. If Earth were really a globe with eight inches per mile squared downward spherical curvature, the datum lines adhered to by builders using spirit levels in large projects like pipelines, railways, bridges, canals and tunnels would constantly deviate. Spirit levels simply find a perpendicular to gravity at the point where they're sitting. Over short distances, that's indistinguishable from flat. But over long distances, these level lines are all tangents to the globe. That's why levels set up miles apart won't point at the exact same plane. Each is locally horizontal relative to Earth's center. In reality, however, such large projects are done without any allowance for curvature or deviation from established horizontal datum lines. Saying that doesn't make it true because they absolutely do make an allowance. The Suez Canal, for example, which connects the Mediterranean and Red Seas, was dug along a horizontal datum line 26 feet below sea level, passing through several lakes from one sea to the other, with the datum line and the water's surface running perfectly parallel over a hundred miles. The Suez Canal wasn't carved as a giant 26 foot deep trench across a hundred miles. Each section was surveyed to local mean sea level and cut accordingly. And it includes things like locks and lakes and tide gates. Its datum is simply a reference height for construction, not a single dead level plane across Egypt. I can't quite believe you've put a spirit level on this list. Really poor start to part two this, Eric. Let's move on to technology seven. Seven. Sextants. Sextants are navigational instruments which measure the angle between visible celestial objects like the sun or a star and the horizon. Using a system of mirrors, sextants allow navigators to align the reflected image of a celestial body with the horizon in order to measure its angle from a graduated arc. This measurement can then be used along with simple Euclidean plane geometry to determine one's latitude. Sextants don't prove a flat Earth. They work precisely because the Earth is curved. When you measure the angle of a star or the sun above the horizon, you're measuring it relative to a local tangent plane. The difference between that angle at different locations tells you your latitude on a sphere. The elevation of any star changes predictably with latitude, which is why a sextant reading plus a nautical almanac can place you anywhere on the globe within a mile. All you do is measure the angle between the pole star and your local sea horizon and that exact angle measured will be your latitude on Earth. Yes, and the only shape where that works is indeed a sphere. Well done for debunking yourself. This is because Polaris sits directly above the North Pole, giving a straight vertical. The sextant provides an angular reading, making it the hypotenuse angle of a triangle. And the flat level surface of the Earth 
gives the second side of the triangle. Polaris appears directly above the North Pole, yes, but its altitude above your local horizon drops as you move south, about one degree per one degree of latitude. As I said, that only makes sense on a sphere, where your local horizontal plane is a tangent that changes angles as you travel. You're just damaging yourself more here than proving flat Earth. Let's move on to number eight, shall we? Eight, gyroscopes. Gyroscopes are precision instruments consisting of a wheel mounted inside two or three gimbals, which provide pivoting support, allowing the wheel to rotate about a single axis. As the entire contraption moves and shifts angles, the gimbals will move and shift accordingly, but the inner wheel never changes its angle with respect to its initial reference frame. This unique property is called rigidity in space, meaning the inner wheel maintains its orientation and axis of rotation in relation to space, and not to the surface of the Earth. This means that the base of a gyroscope, set in motion, with its axis in a vertical position, then placed on a table for six hours, should rotate 90 degrees, if sitting upon a spinning globe Earth. A freely spinning gyroscope does maintain its orientation in inertial space, which is exactly why, on our rotating Earth, its axis appears to drift relative to the ground, a phenomenon called apparent precession. Now, this is not hypothetical. It's the basis of Foucault's pendulum and gyro compasses. In fact, modern aircraft and ships constantly correct for Earth rate drift in their gyros. As the globe turns under the gyroscope for six hours, the axis should slowly turn from vertical to horizontal. This experiment has been tested many times, with several full-length videos available online, and never does the gyroscope's vertical axis shift whatsoever. If you leave a high-quality free gyroscope running, its axis will process at a predictable rate depending on your latitude, which is the principle behind gyro compasses. Now, videos that claim no drift are almost always toy gyroscopes, or gimbaled units with built-in dampeners, or they're looking for the wrong kind of motion. If the heliocentric model were true, not only would gyroscopes detect the alleged 1,000 mile per hour spin of the globe, but also the 67,000 mile per hour revolution around the sun the entire solar system's 500,000 mile per hour spiral through the Milky Way galaxy, and the entire galaxy's million plus mile per hour journey through the universe. Gyroscopes respond to rotation, not straight line motion. The 67,000 miles per hour orbital speed around the sun and the half million miles per hour motion through our galaxy are essentially straight line motions at a constant rate. From inside that frame of reference, you're in free fall. So there's no torque or tip to the gyro. The only thing a gyro sees is when its reference frame rotates, which on Earth is the daily spin, and that's exactly what it shows. More misunderstanding of what technology does here from Eric. Let's move on to number nine. Nine. Telescopes, periscopes, and zoom cameras. Telescopes are devices composed of lenses and or curved mirrors for magnifying and viewing distant objects. Similarly, periscopes use several mirrors, a prism, and or advanced fiber optics to magnify and view distant objects over or around obstacles that prevent direct line of sight observation. Modern zoom cameras also use multiple lenses for the purpose of magnifying and viewing distant objects. No surprise the P1000 is in there, but a telescope? Really? Eric DeBay has just listed a telescope as a piece of technology that proves flat Earth. Amazing! By using these technologies, we can consistently observe objects at incredibly long distances, far beyond what would be possible if Earth was actually a globe of given proportions. I'm not even going to give this one time, because I've debunked so many long distance we see too far videos now that it's silly. Another fail. Let's move on to technology number 10 then. 10. Lighthouses. Lighthouses are towers built with a system of lamps and lenses to cast light for long distances, serving as a beacon and navigational aid at sea. The great distance from which various lighthouse lights around the world are visible at sea far exceeds what should be possible on a globe of given proportions. Now, the actual geographic range of a lighthouse on a sphere is set by the height of the light and the height of the observer. On a globe you can see further, obviously, if either you or the light is higher. For example, the Dunkirk light in southern France, at an altitude of 194 feet, is visible from a boat 
10 feet above sea level, 28 miles away. Is it though? Do you have evidence for this? Are your numbers correct? This is the thing, you can say all this, but without the correct numbers and the actual visual evidence, this is just your say so. And as I said earlier, the amount of times I've debunked a video that says we see too far is quite incredible. You always, and I mean always, get the numbers wrong and the footage ends up proving the globe. Why are you not showing any of this footage now, I wonder? I think I know why, but I guess I'm gonna to have to give you the benefit of the doubt. And that's where we're gonna finish for today. A list of 10 technologies which actually don't prove the Earth is flat. It just proves that either Eric has no clue what he's talking about or he's lying. I'll let you decide which one. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another video. Thanks so much for watching today, everyone. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. I'm so glad I've got through this because yesterday I had a wisdom tooth removed on my lower jaw and it is killing me, but I still managed to do it. <sighs> Thanks very much, everyone. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow where Level Earth Observer is back for more anti-space theories. See you then.